Good morning, folks. It's a calmer day on our star. We've got some weather alerts for tonight, two looks into the past, and an electric discovery at Princeton. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star were indeed calm. The southern coronal hole system appears very patchy and disconnected from the polar opening, probably the quietest day on the sun since sunspots started coming back. And the solar wind is following suit. Plasma speed in purple shows the stream getting back below 400 kilometers per second. We are back in ambient quiet territory, and indeed there is nothing but green on the KP index. Looking ahead to tonight, this one won't really develop until after sundown, but twin systems in Canada and the Midwest will contain a lot of power to produce isolated severe conditions. Eyes on them. We are also watching the strongest storm on Earth, already drenching southern Japanese islands and approaching the direct landfall. Up next, folks, we've got the full solar polar fields data here, and if you recall about two weeks ago, it was the source of our saying we had to be concerned about earthquakes in the late August through first week and a half of September. The end of August saw one flurry, which brought four magnitude six quakes in three days. Long-term average is three per week, by the way. And we've had a few days off here now, but we've also seen these 12 to 15 day windows rock the start and finishing line. So, while we're hoping to have had the pressure release, we are approaching that finishing line of the watch period, and indeed the key date coming up is the Earth northern heliospheric maximum coming early next week. Eyes on this, all together. Bit of fun here. From my spot in the springs, I can see down into the stadium there at the academy. I can also see the old Air Force One on the drive-in. But cool enough, they have named their mascot Nova. About 70-80% to 80 of you watching will get a smile out of that one, like I did. New data analysis methods are allowing scientists to go back to noisy and difficult data in paleoclimate records and pull out major shifts. One here is shown to have taken out the Indus population. It had been believed that this civilization was taken out by pre-Vikings or earthquakes, but alas, no. It was climate change. Moving out to another mystery ring in space, they're getting good at spotting these, as it's number four on the summer alone. But this one they say is different, containing a ratio of pattern to random motions that is four times greater than expected in any model of the early universe. This makes it very much like the objects in the modern universe, with the exception of its strange appearance, of course. But the study also joins other timeline issues like supermassive quasars or galaxy clusters at the early stages as being unexpected features so early in their version of the cosmos. In reality, their version needs rewritten. And Princeton just helped to do a bit of that. In a study that changes fundamental physics and which has implications not only for their tokamak fusion studies, but for everything from the smallest particle physics to plasma dynamics to natural circuitry of something like the Earth to astrophysical plasma and the birth and evolution of the entire universe. Current drives do not require electron collisions just low-frequency waves. This overturns decades of conventional thinking about a very basic aspect of electromagnetic science. No collisions needed. The electrons ride the wave. This plays in cosmology, obviously, but also in the triggering of stellar recurrent nova, in how stars form and evolve, and it is definitely going to help explain the electrodynamic activity of our atmosphere living inside an electric field of solar wind. It's all connected. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.